with me is Anama Anand Kumar. Did yeah. I say that right? Yeah, that's great. <laughs> okay. She is uh, the winner of the Faculty Awards. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And she's from UC Irvine, by the way. Yay. Yeah. Plug to the UC system. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what did it mean to you to win the Faculty Award? I mean, it was really exciting, uh, you know, to, it's a great honor, like when I see all my predecessors who won the award and they've gone on to do like really great research and exciting research, it, you know, it's Impressive. a big motivation for me and it's just great, like uh, coming to this event and, uh, you know, uh, being there just before Bill Gates went up to speak, it was just uh, very exciting. Amazing, yeah. wasn't it? it was. And plus this award comes with it, there's a cash yeah. prize, there's resources, yeah. what will you do with that, do you think? So this is great, like, you know, so the, as uh, Harold has you know, earlier uh, mentioned that this, will, this is uh, like, you know, funding with no strings attached, which is great in, the, in terms of like, if I want to hire a great student or a postdoc, you know, this is there for me and, and this is great. And it also opens doors within Microsoft Research. Like I've already been interacting a whole lot with Microsoft Research and I look forward to taking it to a next level. So. This will certainly put you and your research in the spotlight, which is good pressure. It's yeah, good, that's right? Great. That's great. Um, <laughs> it's very exciting for me. And then describe to us a little bit about what your research is about. I know it has to do with graphing variables, but tell, tell us more. So uh, I'm interested in designing large-scale machine learning algorithms with broad applicability. So data deluge is something that we are seeing in a number of domains. We have now large amounts of data, but even as we have large amounts of data, it gets richer, meaning there are more variables or more unknowns with as we get more data. So how do we handle this? So this is what I call high dimensional learning. So there needs to be like kind of a whole new bag of techniques and new way of thinking in terms of how we can do this with limited computational and sample resources. Just one example, I saw um, a bit of clip of a video about this. You could track, for example, how huge groups are using Twitter and sort of what patterns emerge. Exactly. Like you automatically want to learn like are there like kind of hidden groups of users who move together who ah. interact together and you know so this is an interesting problem I've been working on how to detect hidden communities within networks and how to do it efficiently in, you know, in an extremely fast way like the latest project I've been looking at how to implement these on GPUs uh, you know to in order to even uh, get the uh, capability of parallel computation on a massive scale and to be able to you know scale this to large and large um, large networks another example is going to be used in healthcare i understand that you're sort of graphing predictable or patterns predictability however you want to call it in uh, genes, for example? Yeah. So, I mean, you know, I've been working uh, with some computational biologists and again, like, you know, working on more interdisciplinary research is something that I find very exciting. It, you know, opens up like kind of new ideas and uh, new tools. And so this particular project, I'm looking on how gene associations can be modeled through these machine learning techniques, like how we can automatically learn about hidden regulators or regulatory mechanisms uh, that different groups of genes undergo. And this will uh, enable us to, you know, well, vastly bring down the cost of experiments because ah. it would be impossible to like experiment over different groups of genes and predict how they would be behaving together through some common regulatory mechanism. So you're making and the computer do the work, yeah. running the algorithms to see what patterns might emerge, what are the connections between exactly. these genes. Exactly, and this will uh, uh, hopefully, you know, enable us to uh, do some uh, uh, prediction of like how genes may affect diseases down the line and uh, so yeah this is another exciting uh, area where some of my techniques uh, can be hugely applicable. Okay our host Chris has a question for you too. Yeah. Chris go ahead. Well I'm going to toss it over to the expert here because Harold Javid is here and when you got one of the new faculty fellows there <laughs> uh, I know you got to tip the cap somehow right? Mm. Anima we just really want to congratulate you. I had a question you know if you think about four or five years from now, how do you think this will make a difference for you? I think it's uh, what I would call it as like this is the tipping point. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I would look back and say that, uh, you know, oh, you know, the award 
came by and then after that everything started like you know <laughs> and then I hope to be, you know be having a, a nice large group of students and postdocs uh, with whom I'm able to you know coll also collaborate with Microsoft researchers and take my research to a whole new level. This so is sort of like winning the MacArthur <laughs> Genius Grants you know no strings attached right? Yeah <laughs> to be honest like the day I got the award I woke up dreaming that I had gotten the MacArthur Award really? which, which is very strange I never think about about it. So now that you mentioned that... Well, it's the equivalent in the computer <laughs> no, science world, right? Exciting, but yeah. I mean, there's also pressure because then all eyes are on you and they all want to know what is the result of your, you know, what's going to happen with your research. <laughs> I'm very excited too as well. So I hope that, you know, it will lead to something uh, very great from here on. So. Well, congratulations. Thank this you. is really Thank exciting. You. And I hope yeah. you enjoy this uh, faculty it's, summit. It's very exciting. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And she's also assistant professor for for Computer Science Institute in Mexico, and you were telling me that in Mexico, maybe opportunities for women in computer science are not as great. Yeah, it's very difficult. There is not a lot of graduate programs and good quality graduate programs. So I think it's very interesting having, you know, winning this award. I did my master and my PhD in Mexico. This shows that the quality of education at that, at that country. So it must be a real boost to win this Microsoft Faculty Award. Yeah, I know. It opens a lot of opportunities, visibility to your work, uh, of course, the money that will enable me to me to focus on ideas instead of going through raising money. Raising money. <laughs> so uh, that's that's a very good opportunity for me. And I know the least favorite thing of researchers is generally raising money. But you know, they at the studio were talking about how ubiquitous social media is, and I know that one of your your primary research points is the ubiquitousness, however you say, ubiquity of computing and how we all do it now. Yeah, what, what I mainly do is I do I design ubiquitous environments, which means using sensors, uh, interactive surfaces, tangible computing to enhance humans' interactions with their world. And I have particularly explored uh, how this technology impact healthcare, particularly children with autism. And what I found out with, through the design studies and the use and deployment of this technology is that this technology positively impacts the attention of children with autism and reduces behavior problems. See, and that's so interesting because there are those who argue that computers actually shorten the attention span of kids, and you're saying just the opposite. Yeah, for these children, it's very interesting because like a ubiquitous computing moves the digital support, the computational support outside of the desktop environment. So th this is why it makes sense for the children and for this population because they will not be constrained to using a keyboard or a, a traditional desktop uh, setup instead of technologies integrating in the environment they live and interact. So they can engage with therapy, with people and with the activity which is what they like. Very interesting. Well, I, I look forward to more of your research in the future, which you will do with this award. Thank you so much.